blog fam. I'm in a bit of a pickle. I'm a writer with nothing to write about. What a cliche. Why is this so hard? I'm a creative. I thought this quarantine would give me the time to create, but all I seem to be doing is creating excuses to eat all of my rations. As stated in my last post, I was going to start meditating and exercising and making banana bread. Have I done any of those things? Nope. Have I put too much pressure on myself? Probably. Is my need for societal validation overshadowing my need for basic human connection? Heck. I'm so lonely. The least I could have done is gotten myself some company to be locked up with. That would be delightful. Ideally, he'd be a nice guy. He makes me laugh and cares about me and doesn't get defensive when I ask him what his mood side is. He respects the independent woman that I am while also showing me unconditional affection. This guy would be different. He would be my special someone, I would be his. Gah, what the f was that? Ew. I just sounded like a guy writing a woman in an indie film. Did I really just rom-com myself? Nah, no more of that. What do I really want? I want to be choked out while getting my cervix destroyed. I want someone to pull my hair as I suck their dick while another girl watches. I want to run towards them through a field of flowers where we embrace and make love by a palm surrounded by ducks. I want to have sex in public. And no readers, I'm not going to call my ex, and nor should you. Use this time to work on yourself, don't succumb to unessential temptation. And not just him, the whole going outside during a quarantine thing is just wrong, don't do it. And just so you all know, I did the right thing. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next post. That was our film, everyone. See you at the Oscars, guys. <laughs> so we kind of wanted to write a bit more of an edgy little short just for fun. We were sitting in quarantine and we were like, what can we do? We're both filmmakers and we wanted to make something. One thing we noticed in a lot of the projects that I've either worked on or Andrea's worked on, a lot of the female characters and the lead male characters have been written almost identical. And it seems to be a really common theme that seems to be amongst it, which is that an average guy tries to meets a, a quirky girl who isn't sexual, who's a bit innocent and a bit naive when it yeah, comes. But, but she's a little bit sexual. She has to be sexual enough for the main character so that he feels desired, but she can't be a hoe otherwise. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's just An easy target. Yeah. And, but that guy, he's always just a really – Generic, oh, I'm just kind of floating through life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, she'll never like me. And the truth is, in the real world, she shouldn't. Nope. And that's where my frustration has come from those sort of films. So the reason we wrote this little short was to show that women, they can actually still have sexual desires, fantasies, all that sort of stuff, yes. just like men do. Trust me, we've seen your Pornhub history. We've seen all that <laughs> crap. We know that you do dirty shit too. So do women. Fucking get used to it. Get exactly. It. It's 2020. Stop yeah. kink shaming us. Unless your kink is kink shaming. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it is over the top because, yes, it's satire. So yeah. don't, don't get too bent out of shape about it. But I think it's also important to, to show that – Women do want to have sex and mm. I, it should be normal. It shouldn't be so taboo. No. It's younger. I think it's a nice escape from reality. Like I still love these films. Do not get me wrong for a second. There's They're so many fun. crappy films fun. with crappy messages that I fucking love. Same with music. Like people think that's how love and dating works. 
They think, yes. oh, it will just happen. Just be yourself. You'll find the one one day instead of taking proactive steps to become a, the best version of yourself to attract the best quality people. Yeah. yeah, I think the phrase should definitely not be just be yourself. It should be be the best version of yourself. Exactly. Or strive to be the best version of yourself. Exactly that. Yeah. And that's the problem I have with these films is they reward mediocrity. Mm. And then it makes people think they don't really need to step up because everyone thinks there's a one for them somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it just frustrates me. I mean, um, we were talking about a couple of films earlier that we've liked for certain re- reasons or disliked for certain reasons. Um, one of the films I really loved was Crazy Stupid Love mm. because every character starts somewhere completely different and ends somewhere better from bad things happening. Yes. And that's what happens in life. Bad shit happens and depending on how you handle it and grow from it or acknowledge it or whatever, that's where you'll get yourself into better and more interesting positions in life. He was cheated on by his main character and he still falls in love with her at the end. Most people would be like, oh, stuff her, she cheated, blah, blah. No, he realized why she cheated, didn't didn't forgive her for cheating, but actually realized there's things in myself I need to fix to make sure this doesn't happen again. Not I don't need to date another cheater. Hey, ladies, man, guy. You any tips of the trade? Your wife cheated on you because you lost sight of who you are as a man. Why don't you take that straw out of your mouth? It looks like you're sucking on it. <coughs> Did you sleep with him? Jeez, God. Yeah, probably. You would? You got to take control of your manhood, pal. Beautiful. That's what I love about that. Ryan Gosling's character is full of nothing but passion and stuff like that, but he's lost that ability to actually genuinely connect with one person. He finds that. And it's just, there's something really nice about this film. And even the female uh, lead, uh, I've forgotten the actress's name. Emma Stone. No, not Emma Stone, the older lady. Julianne Moore. Yes. Yes. Um, she realises that she had a great man all along, but the thing is the only reason she realised that was because he got in touch with who he was. Yeah. And that doesn't mean he had to change. He just, like his whole core, mm. he just needed to reignite, if that yeah. kind of makes sense. So that's what I really love about the film. I think it's one of the few Hollywood rom-com films that got it right. And one quick thing, Ryan Gosling had great game in that film. <laughs> Hi, can I buy you a drink? Uh-huh. Let's get out of here. Want to get out of here? Yeah. What are you doing later? <laughs> I don't know. I do. There's lots of beautiful women in this bar, but I can't take my eyes off of you. It's time to go home. Oh, it's forward of you, but okay. Yeah. Should uh, I pull the car around? Have you been drinking? I'll drive. But there's a scene where Steve Steve Carell? Yeah. Yeah. Um, calls him out and says, I've seen you be a womanizer. I've seen you do disgusting things. I've seen you do this. I've seen you do that. I've seen too much. He actually didn't do anything horrible. There's a difference between being a womanizer and just having game. Yes. They're very different things. That's such an important difference. And they never seem to acknowledge that in films. If you're a guy who gets with lots of girls, you're a player, you're a pimp, you're this. He's just, I'm a sexual single person. I go around and have fun. And you know what? I think most people are pretty okay having a one night stand with Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Um, I don't think too many people are going to be upset about that. Yeah. Um, But it's not in how he looks. It's actually how he carries himself. Mm. The way he looks, don't get me wrong, probably helped him get the confidence to act the way he acts. Yeah. But those actions are more important than the looks. Yes. Anyway, that's my little tangent about Crazy Stupid Lover. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to talk about a movie that I don't think portrays relationships very well. Yeah. So the movie that I think is problematic is The Notebook, which also stars Ryan Gosling. Such just, a dream boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is pretty. So um, the plot mainly follows Ryan and Rachel McAdams and they're in the 40s or 50s. So it, it was around that time period. And it follows Ryan and Rachel's relationship. And uh, Ryan has good game. Will you go out with me? No. No? Ah! Damn, my hair's slipping. Okay, fine. I'll go out with you. No, don't do me any favors. No, I want to. Say it again. I want to go out with you. All right, all right, we'll go out. <laughs> Able to get with Rachel and they have like a bit of a a bit of a thing happening, but then we, we just see these montages of all of all their fights and all their um their seemingly toxic tendencies that they have towards each other. It's very problematic and um then later on I'm I'm paraphrasing the heck out of this because I just couldn't finish this movie but <laughs> Maybe she is judging it <laughs> this, like I am sorry if I'm taking liberties but they break up I believe for a period it's of like time. saying the Lion King is shit because Simba just bailed to the jungle and never came back <laughs> <laughs> listen did you hear that 
I'm getting somewhere with right, this. <laughs> Rachel meets another guy. This guy is different, obviously. They were able to grow a bit more together. She seemingly became a better person. Mm. Then all of a sudden something happens and she ends up back with Ryan in like in that same really harmful mm. relationship that was built up through like pretty much mm. two thirds of this film. And homeboy just accepts it and that makes me really mad because he was beautiful as well pretty problematic white people who <laughs> can't get out of their own ego I had to make it about race and um, am i wrong though you are not yes. <laughs> but ultimately i think the, the the main problem with that movie was its reception and how so many um Women especially, it's just like because the, it's all my... It's, it's a it's definitive movie. It's like, oh my God, The Notebook. Just like, wow, it was such a whirlwind. It was so romantic. And I'm just like, no. Yeah. This is this is not healthy. No, and that, and that's that's the thing. It's not so much that these films are bad in themselves. It's the reactions that they get. Exactly. And one of the great things I've just... It, it's ta- drama. Well, just it's talking drama, about but. sexualized women, how we were at the start. Mm. You know what I actually love as an example? Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, yeah. Say what you want about the book. Say what you want about the film. I, I don't give a shit. I haven't watched or read it. And that's not because I'm like, oh, I'm too cool. It's just I haven't done it. But that right there, bestseller, number one movie in box office for a few like, weeks. Hmm, by women. Did, did you know many men that went and watched that? No. That was <laughs> packed with women who were finally getting to tap into some of those fantasies that they have, wherever it's like the man in power, this sort of stuff. And that doesn't mean they want every guy to treat them like they're powerless. There is a difference in this. It's, but when it's someone they desire, those can be attractive qualities. Someone who's in charge, someone who's rich, someone who has... Yeah, like, is a provider, is, yeah. the, is the usual male trope of a uh, very strong, intelligent mm. man. But challenges her sexually as well. Yes. And this is the thing. It's not... There is a very big difference between rape, harassment, all that sort of stuff, and fun sexual tension using power play, using tension, using roughness and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's kinks. It's- yeah, exactly. And so the fact that so many women connected with that film kind of tells you that women aren't all these innocent rom-com characters in the in these indie films that yes. men want them to be. Yes, women want sex as much as men do. <laughs> <laughs> Just not always with you. Well, and like actually one of the things we were talking about yesterday in regards to media, Charlie Sheen in um two and a half men oh yes. absolute womanizer absolute pig but charming as fuck alan i love charlie Shane. i know but we all do <laughs> yeah. but that's because he owns who he is mm. he knows he's a, a womanizer he knows that he's an alcoholic he knows he's this stuff and he just rolls with it he goes he doesn't make apologies for it whereas alan gets frustrated because he goes these qualities are horrible and not because those qualities are horrible it's because when his character does them they are received badly that's because it's incongruent with the rest of his character. Right, so it's just a coincidence that I'm sitting here waiting for a prostitute and all of a sudden you show up at the front door. You're waiting for a prostitute? No. Oh, Alan, that's not like you. Yeah, well, when you've had your heart broken enough times and you can't even bear the thought of having an emotional connection with another human being, what else is there to do? A lot of people masturbate, I hear. That's, and that's the same thing that can be really said about a lot of people is we try to, guys, how they act different when they're around like a model or a so-called 10 or whatever like that. They start to act different. They start to try to act cooler than what they are. So it's not that they're trying to act cool. It's that there's a offness about it. It doesn't feel genuine. It's like, is he trying to impress me? Is he, is he trying to be rude to act cool like he doesn't need me? Like it doesn't feel congruent. And it's the same with negging. Like, you guys think, oh, she's a pretty girl, so therefore I've got to, you know, bring her down a peg. The fact that you think you need to bring her down a peg says that you don't like yourself enough. Yeah. That's shit as fucking mindset. I hate that. It's like, oh, I've got to bring her down. It's like, no, just always be bring, putting yourself up. Yeah, problematic. Yeah, so, like, that's why I don't like negging. The, what I do like with good negging, good negging is just treating a girl like she's your friend. How do you treat your friend? You tease each other. You give each other shit. Yeah, it's it, banter. Exactly. It's not yes. about going, oh, you're a piece of crap and you're shit. Oh, really? You pick that dress or anything like that. It's just literally like... S- sorry, do people actually say that? Uh, I, <laughs> I, I've i used something similar in the past. And I stole this from, <laughs> I think it was, oh, I can't remember if it was like RSD or something. Um, But it was a silly comment. It was just like, I went up to this girl and I looked at her dress and just went, too blue. 
<laughs> and, okay, and, look, okay, like, and I didn't say she had a bad dress, but I just threw something and she's like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Why is it too blue? Okay, like, too blue is different than saying you look like shit. Like yeah. it's no, but some guys do that crap. They try to <laughs> like you're not worth it. Blah, blah blah. And there's a way that that can be done, which is read as cheekiness. But if you're doing that from a place where you're thinking you need to bring them down, that just makes you look like a knob. Yeah, that is beta attitude. Yeah, <laughs> we don't yeah. like that. Uh, there's only one thing worse than beta, and that's fake alpha. <laughs> Bleh. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm always alpha. Like I have my moments where I feel good about myself and confident. Um, just like I think everyone has an area they can feel good where if, if you're passionate about politics you can be a beta in fucking the, the politics room if you're Dungeons and Dragons you could be the alpha in the when you've got your friends over doing that no but like yeah. <laughs> when you've got your thing that you're confident in you naturally lift up mm. it's not I have to lift up you just get excited and you do it and that's an alpha quality it's when you're not thinking about I need to prove myself yes it's just like this is like I'm, I love and I'm confident with it. I'm just yeah. going to enjoy it I think the most alpha thing is like not trying to be alpha yeah you just are ex- ex- exactly it's yeah there yeah. was it yeah now nah, i've got nothing <laughs> i was trying to think of yoda's quote there is no there's no try there's like <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm, yes <laughs> that one seagull stop it now <laughs> um, <laughs> but just in whole the, the, i suppose the real message we want to get from this podcast is just about Simply, don't take everything you see in films as real life techniques that work. Hitch is about a pickup date coach, and he goes, "Hey, why don't you steal her dog? I'll put it in front of a car, and you rescue it and stop the car, and then she'll love you because you rescued her dog." (laughs) Someone ever did that? I would kill them. (laughs) No, I know, but like, it's like even if she likes you for that moment, she still has to know the person you are after to fall in love with you. Yeah, exactly. She might go on a date with you, sure, like. Still a bit fucking far-fetched, but yeah, she might go on a date with you. Yeah. But if you're still a boring shit person who's insecure with themselves, mm. you're not going to keep her around. Yeah. And it's the same with being a really fucking good-looking guy. Mm. You might attract that girl initially, but if you're a shit person and a boring person, you're not going to keep them there. Mm. Like, yes. yeah. So is there any sort of wrap-up notes you'd like to add? Um, I think it's very great that we have access to so many amazing movies and we are able to enjoy all these things. It's just let movies stay movies. They are hyped up. Yeah. They they follow a narrative plot line. Life does not follow a narrative. It's hyper line. reality. Like yeah. it's it's all exaggerated. And, and, and all, that's and yeah. that's what it should be because yes, movies can be an escape as you yeah. said. And I think it's important to keep it that way. Try not to apply a t- techniques from the notebook to your real life. Yeah. I think the problem is it's not that you actively go, oh, I saw that in a movie and I'm going to use that. I don't think it's I, that I, simple. I believe it, it, it becomes sort of ingrained exactly. though. Exactly. So just keep an eye on... It's a subconscious Yeah, thing. so just keep an eye on yourself if you notice that you've been trying to do some of these techniques. Have you been waiting around for a friend to realize that, that you like her? Mm. Don't wait. Just go and fucking tell her you like her. If you're not, if you're miserable because she doesn't realize you exist or in that sort of way in her world, yeah, what's the difference in ending it? Mm. You're miserable either way. Just fucking end it and try to find something new, and then you can rebuild that friendship later when you're in a bit of a healthier mindset. Yes. So, guys, it's just be careful when you're thinking about this because it's not going to be you actively saying something and from a movie as a direct quote. I know we know you, that's not what you're doing. What you might be doing though is taking expectations from these films and not realizing that. That's what your idea of how love and relationships work is. That or your parents. Yes, yeah. because um, yeah, the right, the right person, the one, your soulmate. It's not that isn't just going to manifest itself in front of you. Yeah, you need to actively be the best version of yourself. Yeah, that you, you can be. You need to make it happen, guys. Just just being there and existing will not make romance and love and interesting shit happen. Yes. You need to be willing to step up and fail. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you enjoyed the short film. Um, but, yeah, this was – you didn't introduce yourself. Oh, hi, I'm Andrea. <laughs> Andrea. Uh, yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>